I am now joined by a man that we've had on the program many a times before, and now he's got, uh, you know, you would say the biggest fight of his career here at the Contender Series, Rico, man, as always. I, I appreciate time. I feel like it wasn't that long ago we were talking about your fight back in February, and the Contender Series got brought up. What, was that kind of, did you feel like that ultimately that win was going to lead to this opportunity? Not necessarily. I mean, I'm always, especially as of late, I've been trying to just focus on one fight at a time, you know, and really make sure that I only focus on one fight at a time because you never really know what's going on, especially nowadays where, you know, fighters are pulled all over the world. There's so many different people, so many athletes, you know what I mean? I just try to keep it simple, work hard, get better, win fights. You know, that's pretty much it. And, of course, uh, you got that win back, back in February at CES 48. Uh, you know, overall, how, how do you assess your performance in that fight? Uh, not bad. I mean, past two fights have been kind of, you know, short notice opponent changes. So, I mean, sometimes that makes for, like, uh, more of you know, a nerve-wracking type of situation going into the fight, like, a couple of days before, because you don't, you know, you didn't really I didn't see much footage on my opponent. I don't really know anything about him. Um, I knew he... You know, I knew his his record and basic information. You know what I mean? It was pretty much, you know, uh, not exactly the best type of situation to be going in because it almost puts more pressure on you, really, because you feel like you're in a situation like, you know, uh, it just makes it a little tougher. Like, if you lose, what the hell? If, if you win but don't really perform well, it's like, what the heck? This guy had a short notice fight against you. It's like, it almost added pressure to, like, really perform. But, I mean, I've been there and I'm so used to it. You know what I mean? Like, I've had, it's happened to me so many times. And that's why, like, past couple of fights and even the past couple of years, I just focus on, you know, focus, uh, you know, keeping control of the things I have control of. You know what I mean? I'm, I, I can work really hard. I can get better and I can do my best to win. And that's really all I try to focus on everything else. You know, it is what it is. I mean, the short notice opportunities, is, is it kind of, you look at it as like, man, there's not, I mean, obviously the gate, you gain a win and, and you continue your rise, but do you almost feel like it's like a lose, lose scenario in a way? Well, I mean, it, it can be if you if you don't, you know, if you, you let it happen, if you let that, like, bother you and, and change your performance. You know what I mean? If, if you uh, if, if you go out and kind of uh, have too much things going on in your brain and you don't really, you know, focus on the fight itself, you know, you can probably not perform up to your ability. And then, yeah, it's, it's you're almost you're like your stock's going down in a way. You know what I mean? I just want that's why I just keep it simple. As I, I went out there and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do what I do. I'm going to do my best to finish this dude and put on a show doing it. And you know what I mean? At the end of the day, that's really all I got to do. If I can put on a show, finish fights, win fights, doesn't matter who was in there. You know what I mean? That's all I got to focus on, really. Just finish fights and, and get the W and that's it. Things will, things will uh, you know, I'll climb the ladder, you know. How much of this sport is mental to you? I mean, you know, we, uh, you know, the mental side of this game, it, it, so much gets talked about it. But for you, it, is it as much mental as it is physical? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, um, the past couple of years I've, I've talked, I've, you know, I've gotten a lot better about, you know, training smarter, not necessarily harder, harder and smarter, you know, like pacing out my camps better, um, scheduling training camp, the, the, like the proper way, like week to week, I'm not doing like strength and conditioning days where I'm doing heavy sparring and things like that. And like the mental game going into a fight is huge. So when you align, when you do your best to set everything up to make it go as smooth as possible and, and be prepared for when it doesn't go smooth because it never usually does. You know what I mean? But that's the big, that's the mental game is always knowing that, you know, just being able to overcome whatever little obstacles there are. You just, my goal is just to win fights. That's it. I go out there. I'm just doing my, put myself in the best position to win and, and that's it, you know? So. I mean, I think for me, every time that I know I'm going to be talking to you or, or think about your name, I always think about Bellator 110. I remember being on, on press row that night and, and you, th you talk about obstacles and adversities you have to get through. And like, I think that night would, would that not be one of the biggest obstacles because of how it ended in no contest and, and how you ultimately grew from that? Yeah, it was interesting because that next fight, I actually had a rematch with that kid. And the thing that was so wild was I got my tonsils removed a couple of weeks before, which was like a really serious surgery because it, it ruptured and blood actually went into my lungs. I had to get rushed back to the hospital. So I was in the, in the hospital for like, I think three days, probably three weeks, four weeks before that fight. So like in the middle of my, what my training camp would have been, you know what I mean? So it was like really mentally, you know, frustrating because I couldn't do anything. I couldn't train. You know what I mean? I had 
my my throat was literally uh they actually had to like burn it to 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 seal it you know what i mean and it was dreadful man i was on my couch just miserable and and worrying about shit i gotta get back in the gym i have the biggest fight of my life coming i gotta get back but um i've always gone through crazy things in my training camps i broke my nose like on my the very last sparring day like of at least two or three times I've done, I've gone through things where like, I'm always prepared. It's almost, we have like a joke in my gym. Like I used to get sinus infections and things like that from like just overworking and just, I have a history of it. And that's actually why I got my tonsils removed because it, I would, it would turn into other things, but I'm so used to things going bad in my training camps and it, it's helped me mentally be strong, you know, and be like, listen, you've done what you can, you know, let's just focus on, you know, the fight and everything will go It's fine. You can't freak out. You know, you got to really just, Calm you, you know, you're mentally, you know, you go, oh, I gotta be in the gym right now. I gotta be doing. I've been in the gym for years. It's like a couple of days missing ain't gonna change too, too much. You know what I mean? Yeah, you gotta be in shape. You gotta be doing this. But at the end of the day, I've been doing this for so long. You know, it's how you can translate what you do day in, day out over the years into that cage <clears throat> for the fight. You know, for fight night. That's a big. That's the. Um, that's a big deal. You know. Montel Jackson, the opponent here um, on on June the twelfth. How, how familiar were you with him at all? When uh, you know your management gives you a call, say, "Hey, uh, we got this fight. Here it is." I mean, was it one of those things you had to go, you know, hop on your computer and kind of start seeing who this guy was? Yeah, I honestly, I don't even care at this point. <laughs> I didn't really care. I, was, I heard, you know, you get an opportunity to fight in front of Dana White for the Contender Series. I didn't care who they, you know, what the opponent was. He didn't even. I don't even think he told me at first. I didn't care. He was like talking about, I was like, I don't care, man. I'm, you know, let's go, let's do it, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I was ready, you know? And it's funny because if this happened probably two years ago, I probably would, I definitely would have accepted it. I definitely would have, but I don't think I'd be this comfortable with the whole situation. I don't think I'd be as like, uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm enjoying it. You know, I'm not really so nervous and so freaked out. I remember like, like you said for Bellator, that fight where I got, had the no contest. I remember almost like, puking in my mouth the next fight I had because I was so nervous because the whole thing that went I was like I remember being like I've never been that nervous coming into a fight I ended up doing good you know I won the fight whatever but first couple you know first couple minutes as the fight started I remember just being like you know a shell kind I was really really nervous and the past couple fights it's almost been like I've been so calm and I was like wait a minute is this am I too calm or is this good and it's it's been good I feel very very relaxed you know and I'm I feel like it's going to only get better and better and better, especially with the contender series not being like your average type of style of fighting. You know what I mean? It's not as many people there. It's a different crowd, different atmosphere, different style. So I think that my my past um, experiences will definitely benefit me in this fight. Yeah, I mean, I think that's one of the most interesting thing is, I mean, you're just in a gym and there's probably less than a hundred people. If you count all the production people, and whatnot that, that are in that venue. Um, and you're going to be able to hear everything your coaches say, which, you know, maybe you're maybe not depending on the venue. You're able to hear that. I mean, have you thought about like what that's going to be like? And maybe talk to some of the other Northeast fighters that have already gone through this to kind of, you know, see what you can expect, you know, on June the 12th. Yeah, for sure. I, um, you know, I've actually got the opportunity to, to corner, um, a couple people in the UFC and I've also, you know, I've, I've fought for my last two fights have been on C uh, access TV. So I like building up to the fight itself. I feel like, um, not only fight night, but fight week, like all the process of like, while you cut weight, the media things you got to do and everything else you got to do while you're trying to make weight. I think I'm, I'm going to be more prepared than I would have been because I've been there and done that kind of, or I've been with people that have done it, you know, and, um, for fight night, for the most part, I, yeah, I, I, you know, I've talked to a couple of guys that have been on, like, Greg Rebello has been on the show before. He's gone through it. You know what I mean? So he told me, like, kind of what it's like. Um, they also are fighting. It's The fight happens in the tough house, the, the, the house where they have uh, the tough enough, um, you know, show. So we are, you know, I have people in my gym that are familiar with, you know, that place and how, you know, it's, like you said, it's, you know, it's a different atmosphere. It's not your average fight with, you know, fans going crazy. This is it's very, you know only like probably about a hundred people, like you said. So it's different, you know, di different atmosphere, but I'm, I'm already ready for it. You know, I'm already prepared because like you said, I've, we've already had these, these talks, you know what I mean? And, and you, you do have the experience advantage in, in this fight with, you know, only having five pro fights. I mean, do you, do you look at, at that as a, you know, a, you know, t a, a, you know, an advantage for you in this fight or is that something that just gets overblown? 
no experience is definitely always a you know everybody's different you know but um uh, you can't go wrong with experience you know what i mean I, that's probably that's the best teacher you know what i mean i it's funny because i think this will be my 26th or 27th fight with amateur and pro like to get you know combined and it's like i feel like i'm just getting started i'm just starting to get comfortable you know what I mean? I'm just starting to like realize, okay, see the, the changes of how I, how I am in the locker room getting ready. And like, you know, I've done it over and over and over, but it, it's still, it, it, you know, MMA and, and fighting in general, like when you're, you're training to fight somebody that's training to fight you, you know, it's not exact. It, and it's all this build up for that one day, you know, how do you prep yourself for that one day? And I'm getting a lot better at it. You know, I'm getting a lot more comfortable with the whole thing. And, I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm just really getting started and I, I'm, I'm excited to see how I progress from here because I'm starting to put it all together. A, a word you mentioned there, comfortable. Do you remember when the first fight you had where you felt comfortable in there? Like, okay, this is what I do. Let's just go. I mean, you know, because some guys say it, it takes a long time for you to kind of feel comfortable with it. For you, was it a long time coming? Well, my first, my, my I think my first five amateur fights were first round finishes within like two minutes, not even, you know what I mean? So I never really got that experience of time in the cage. You know what I mean? So that's why I kept fighting amateur. I wanted to get decisions. I wanted to like, at least go the distance. I wanted to see what it'd be like to fight late in the third round, you know, things like that. And, um, so I got some really good experience down in Florida. I fought for a rise of the warrior tournament and, um, I got a little bit longer rounds with one of the kids who was just a wrestler. I thought he was, you know, really, really heavy, you know, grunt wrestler. And I did a really good job just picking him apart and being patient. I remember like halfway through the first round, just really starting to settle down and be like, all right, this kid, I'm stuffing every one of his takedowns and I'm just putting it on him. And it's only a matter of time till I, till I, I finish him one way or the other. And I did, I got the, you know, I got the, uh, got that guillotine because he just fell into a single leg and I just yoked him up after just peppering him up the whole fight. But there are times in fights where you do, you start to settle down a little bit and you start, cause first, you know, first, everybody's different, you know, so you kind of like, I don't really go in there with a game plan. So it's, it's more about like how, like, you know, people come out really like anxious and wanting to like rip your head off. It's harder to settle down. You've got to be on your toes, you gotta, you know, be heads up. But as the fight develops and as it goes on, you know, it, it starts to, you know, it starts to settle and it gets more technical and it starts to become more of a thinking, you know, um, chess match in a way, you know? So it all depends on the fight. And, of course, a uh, couple of weeks out, uh, less than a month now uh, away from this fight. We look forward to seeing the fight. Of course, it'll air live on UFC Fight Pass on June the 12th, the very first episode of Season 2's Dana White's Tuesday Night Contender Series. Rico, man, as always, I appreciate time. And, of course, let everyone know where they can follow you out on social media. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Um, just Rico DeShulo at uh, Twitter, uh, Rico DeShulo, uh, Instagram and Facebook. I'll, you know, all my social media is the same. But uh, thanks for having me, man. I'm ready to do the damn thing. I can't wait to, uh, to go out there and put on a show. Thanks, Rico, man. I appreciate it.